Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham joins us now. Good to have you in studio. Glad Welcome to be to here. New York Senator. Got out of the craziness of Washington yeah, for at least a couple of days here. My passport expires. I need to get back. <laughs> <laughs> You'll need one. So, okay, let's talk negotiating tactics. Does it make sense at this point in the game? What does it do to undercut John Boehner's leverage when folks go out there and say, you know what, we're, we're willing to go, even 39.6% back to the Clinton rates, as Bob Corker said over the weekend. Is it helpful? Well, I think it's helpful to, to, for Republicans to show on the revenue side we're willing to move, but uh, I believe in capping deductions. Bowl Simpsons is a bipartisan proposal. They didn't raise rates. The gang of six, six senators, three Democrats, three Republicans, they didn't raise rates. They capped deductions to create revenue. Raising rates is sort of a partisan political trophy for Obama. I don't want to go down that road. I'd put revenue on the table only if they, they do entitlement reform. And here's what I don't hear. I don't hear any Democrat of note saying, here's what I would do on the entitlement side. So if I were Republicans, I'd just be quiet for a while and see what the Democrats put on the table for entitlement reform. All right. You know, but the, the big debate last <clears throat> week was Republicans saying, we are going to do exactly what you said. We're mm -hmm. only going to do, uh, you know, cuts in, in deductions. We're going to eliminate loopholes. That's Capping how we're going to get revenue. Right. That's our way to get revenue. Right. It, it seemed like over the weekend, at least for some of them, the whole issue dissolved into an acceptance of an increase in tax rates, which the president made perfectly clear. He said, there's no deal unless I get that. That's what I ran on. The American people are expecting it. Well, here's where the president uh, is going to have a rude awakening. We'll get to the end of the year, and there'll probably be some small deal to get us past the end of the year because sequestration hits in January, wipes out the Department of Defense, a lot of draconian cuts across the board, and taxes on everyone goes up. So I hope Boehner and Obama can find a way to avoid uh, the initial effects of the fiscal cliff. But in February or March, you have to raise the debt ceiling. And I can tell you this, there's a hardening on the Republican side. We're not going to raise the debt ceiling. We're not going to let Obama borrow any more money or any American Congress borrow any more money until we fix this country from becoming Greece, and that requires significant entitlement reform to save Social Security and bankruptcy from, uh, uh, Social Security and Medicare from bankruptcy. Uh, Social Security is going bankrupt in about 20, uh, 20, 25 years. Uh, Medicare is going bankrupt in 15 or 20 years, and uh, the baby boomers are coming in at 10,000 uh, a day, and we just can't sustain you heard those the programs. President last week, he said, we're, we're not going to play that game. He said, well, well the last time you, around, what, they Mr. wouldn't let President, the debt ceiling go up, and I'm going to tell you right now, he said something to this effect, we are not going to play that yes, game. Yes, we will play that game, Mr. President, because it's not a game. The game you're playing is small ball. You're talking about raising rates on the top 2% that would run the government for 11 days. You just got reelected. How about doing something big that's not uh, liberal. How about doing something big that really is bipartisan? Every big idea he has is a liberal idea that drowns us in debt. How about manning up here, Mr. President, and use your mandate to bring this country together to stop us from becoming Greece? How about doing with Boehner what Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan did? You know, this political trophy you want in raising rates runs the government for about 11 days. So when it comes debt ceiling time, Mr. President, you're going to have a Republican Party that's going to make sure we save Medicare and Social Security from bankruptcy and we save this country from becoming Greece. So are you and you want a, and his, one of his proposals is we should never have any con uh, congressional check and balance on raising the debt ceiling. Right. He, he right. got elected and, president, I mean, not king. That that well, that's going table. nowhere. He's not king. He's so you're president. So are, are you saying that Republicans are willing to go to 39.6% to, to back to that rate, but... The place where they will hold the line is on the debt ceiling issue. The rates go up no matter what we do. There needs to be a revenue component of any big deal. I think capping deductions is better than raising rates. But there will come a day in February and March where we have to raise the debt ceiling by trillions of dollars. We're $16 trillion in debt. Is it responsible to keep borrowing money and never address why you're in debt to begin with? And the long-term indebtedness of this country is the baby boomers retiring, putting pressure on Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. So I hope my party will look out for the country, not just the party itself, and push this president to do something he's never done before, lead in a bipartisan way. The White House says that they have come up with a trillion dollars in cuts, that they've done the, the, the spending cuts. It's a joke. It's a joke. Have you seen any market reaction to their plan? They do nothing to uh, keep Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security from going bankrupt. Do you feel like there's an interest on the president's part to save those programs for the future? 
you know, or is it, is it just a political talking he's point? A, he's a small ball guy. He's afraid of his own party. He's afraid of going into a progressive meeting and say, if we don't adjust the age for retirement and means test benefits for Social Security and Medicare, they're going to go bankrupt. There's a possibility to change those programs in a way that would really make a real change down the road that, that he would be remembered for. Well, I would like him to be remembered for a president who saved Social Security and Medicare from bankruptcy by working with Republicans, but he seems to have no inclination to be remembered for anything other than a guy who uh, has a small view of, of, of our fiscal situation. His proposal that he offered to Boehner was literally a joke. It's a $50 billion stimulus package. It raised taxes by $1.6 trillion. It did nothing to save Social Security and Medicare. There'll come a day, and it's called the debt ceiling debate, when Republicans will have leverage to save this country from becoming Greece. I hope we're strong enough as a party to seize that moment. We will see.